Hello and thank you for joining. Today's tutorial is going to be the Java tutorial number three and we're going to talk about an introduction to variables and data types within Java. So I'm going to jump right in here and talk about these basic data types and what we'll do is we'll go in and do a, a couple demos here. So some of the more popular ones and these are what are considered primitive data types and I did want to mention that in Java you always have to declare a variable to, um, to use it and we'll go through some examples in the demo here. So int or integer is going to be a very common one that you use and you can see the range is pretty big here. Um, the size of that is 4 bytes um, but it goes from roughly negative 2.1 million to 2.1 um, million on the positive side. And there's some other ranges here that you may or other data types that you may come across when using variables like shorts or longs and you can see Short is a much smaller number range. Long is a much, much larger range. And you'll get down here into this section here. You have floats and doubles. And what they give you is a um, options for decimals. So in other words, when you're using an integer, that's going to be a whole number. So you can't, you can't add 2.5 and 3.7 together using integers. You have to use a float or a double. The big difference between a float and a double is that you get more uh, granularity using the double than you do the float and you also see that the double is the standard when you start to use decimals in um, in Java so and I'll give you an example of how to use a float in your Java program uh, because you have to do a little bit more to use a float versus a double and then finally I just wanted to mention and we'll, we'll get into this in later tutorials but there's a value called boolean and boolean gives you an option of true or false so it's it's either yes or no type uh, answer there's not multiple options so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in here and create a new class so I go into my package and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to go ahead and call this class variable testing and I'm also going to go down here and I'm going to choose public static void mainline. You need this to run your program, so I'm going to go ahead and have, I can manually type it in or I can have Eclipse create it. So I'm going to have Eclipse do it and I'm going to say finish. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here and let's go in here and let's do integer a and assign a value to it of 10 and we add a semicolon and then we do integer b is equal to, let's do 5 semicolon and then we can do integer and we can call this one we can call it total and then we say total is equal to a plus b now what we'd want to do is we want to type system dot out if I can type here system dot out dot having a problem here system dot out dot print line And then I open my parentheses and then I do, I'm going to do a quote here. Anything in quotes is just considered a string text value. So I'm going to say the total of A and B is equal to, and I'm going to do a space there, and then I'm going to close my quote and have, um, then I'm going to say plus. And what do I want to add here? I want the total of A and B equal to this value here. So I'm going to type in plus total, and that's how you add a variable here. So you'll notice if I click the total button here, you'll see what will happen. It should click up. Oh, I know what I did here. I forgot to put a semicolon. I need a semicolon at the end of that line. And then I go ahead and click the total value, and you see the total variable, and you see it highlights this one here. If I click over here and click on B or A, it doesn't, it doesn't highlight those, and that's because this is just string text. Okay, and the reason for the space here, right here, is I'm going to show you that when I do the output. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this, I'm going to do a control S, I've saved my program, and now I want to run it. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to actually, I'll just right click it actually, right click it, I'm going to say run as, run as a Java application. You can see down here in my console, the total of A and B is equal to 15. And you can see it's equal to space 15. If I didn't have that space there, it would just say equal to 15 without a space. So that's the whole reason for the space. So now, 
what we can do is look at some different values. Like, let's assume that we want to make this number 10.5. So I'm going to go ahead and say double and make A equal 10.5 and make B equal 5.73. And you can see I have an error here. And if I hover over this, I have a type mismatch and it says cannot convert from double to integer. So this is a double value, so it can't convert it to an integer, which is a whole number. So I'm going to change this to a double. And I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to change this to a double. And now I'm going to resave it. I'm going to do Control S. And now I'm going to run it again. I'm going to right click it and say Run As Java Application. And there you have your, your total value of A and B is equal to 16.23 in this case. By the way, if I go over here and make this 5789, and I make this, make up some values here. I resave it, Control S, I rerun it. You can see over here that it's going to extrapolate out those numbers um, up to several characters when you're using a double. When you're using a float, it's much, uh, you get much less granularity. So let's use floats for a minute here. If I change this to a float, change this to a float, and let's leave that one a double for now. So you notice I have a little x here. If I highlight it, it says cannot convert from a double to a float. The default, as I mentioned, once you start using these decimal places, is going to be a double. So if you want to save memory, so I'll go back, going back to the chart here, a float uses four bytes and a double uses 8 bytes. If I want to save memory, I'd want to use a float. In order to set a float variable, initialize that variable or declare it, you want to go in over here and after your value, just put in the character f, lowercase f, and you see that'll fix that problem. Okay, and now if I rerun it, now my, my total can use the double. I'm going to do control s, and now I'll run that. Draw the application, and you can see over here the total of A and B is equal to 16.318. So you can see how long it uh, extrapolates out that number. And now if we change this to a float, we should be okay here because, um, or you'll see what will happen. It will change from that, the length of that one will be, should be shorter now. Yep, so you can see it, it truncated off several, um, several of those digits. So that's what I wanted to share with you, just to get you introduced into working with integers, working with floats, working with doubles, and then um, we're going to be adding four loops, four loop uh, tutorials and some other looping tutorials coming up, and then after that, probably how to get user input. So thanks for joining, and please subscribe. Take care.